Leslie Cornwell, certified nurse midwife with midwifery business consultation. I have a good friend of mine for many years, Terry Lemley. She's also a certified nurse midwife that has a private home birth practice on officially birth center. I'll let her talk about the details of that. Um, Terry, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So Terry, tell us a little bit about your midwifery journey and how you ended up with Gentle Harbor Midwifery Practice. Well, a long time ago, because I'm not very young, I was an OB nurse and decided that I needed to do more for women and offer them more options, became a nurse midwife and worked in the hospital world for about 13 years, found that, again, my hands were tied many times and, and the practice I was um, at, it, that I was working with at the time we weren't seeing this vision, the same vision. And so, okay, so now what do I do? So I started looking and the people in my region said, wait a minute, we need home birth here. And I said, I never thought of that. And I didn't think I could do it business-wise. So I jumped into the world. Uh, it was a good time in my life to do it. And so um, within six months was pretty much um, solvent and able to pay my bills. And we, that was eight years ago. So I say, it's I, gone so uh, fast because you and I were side by side. I was starting my birth center practice the same time you were, and we were almost thinking of joining forces because you're not that far from where my family is. So we've been on this journey. And what's been interesting is Terry's fought through the, the burnout and the highs and lows, and I burned crashing in 2017. She's seen me at all levels. So that's why I, I love that Terry's on. She's resilient. She's got so much knowledge to pass on to midwives. Um, so with starting your practice, what were things you said six months you were solvent like what were things that were kind of the, I'm so glad I started my practice versus holy cow I wish I would have known ahead of time um hmm. how to do how to have honest conversations with clients about money I think I think that's everybody's fear like how do you offer insurance things how do you do and I went down a few roads with some insurance fillers that weren't positive I, at the end of the story, I wound up hiring somebody that worked for me that learned billing. And so that's currently what I do. And that's not how a lot of practices do billing. Some don't, uh, or insurance things, some, some practices, um, you know, say to the client, well, you need to just, you know, send this to your insurance company for reimbursement. And we've opted not to do that because we can make it work the other way. And that offers the client another layer of service. That, I think it makes a difference what volume you're at. You're at such a large volume that it made financial sense to have in-house a biller versus some people yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah, so. Right, right. So so that piece, that was probably the, the most um, challenging piece for me. But beyond that, I felt confident with the care. Um, and what else would I, I had good support of people in my region. If I had questions. How do I get this paperwork? Who do I call for this? I'm stuck on birth certificates. I had other people I could call. So that, that definitely helped make um, things successful. Well, and I think a lot of nurse midwives, I think certified professional midwives, it's part of their apprenticeship, their schooling, but as a nurse midwife, never being exposed to home births and deciding to start a home birth practice, did you feel like there was a learning curve? Did you have good resources from the midwives in the community doing home births? How did that transition go? I think I had um, some, some pretty good people in the community. Um, I think my perspective and how I viewed birth in the first place, um, having been worked in the hospital for 13 years as a midwife, that I'd seen most things. And for some midwives that would make them more, more concerned. But for me, it felt like I have the ability to see most things. Um, so that if there were a concern, a need for transfer, I would know what that looks like. Okay. Um, so, and having a wide variety of, um, baby care experience in my background as a nurse, um, I felt like I had a lot of those good tools. So not a lot was worrisome to me. And so I was perhaps in a unique position, um, more than some others might've had experience with just in their education. Well, and I think it's a certain type, like you said, the perception of birth, because there's many nurse midwives, midwives feel more comfortable in the hospital setting. They have an underlining misunderstanding or fear about a hospital. And so sometimes it's getting past that anxiety of like, okay, these are low risk, healthy women. And what are the resources and training and tools do we need for low risk, healthy women versus the hospital is set up for whatever comes through the doors. So yeah. Right. 
And the value for me and the thing I, I continue to see is the primary thing that keeps me going in home birth is I have a little more control over who else is taking care of the client and their care. Mm -hmm. So in a hospital situation, I don't have control over the nursing staff. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're at the mercy of how that staff is trained. Um, yes, you try to work as a team. Yes, you try to be helpful to each other, but that's not always happening. And so this way I have a little more um, say over that and, and how the client is approached by the other staff that help me because I employ them. Yeah. And so I have that ability, number one, to be more hands-on perhaps because I am their primary care person, perhaps in labor um, with other people helping, but then I also have control over what that verbiage is at the client or, or how the tone of the room is um, played through during a labor process. Yeah, and I think that's part of when we were talking about the benefits of owning your own private practice is like the hospital has privileges, they have protocols, they have guidelines, you have collaborating physician. There's so many variables. Like I don't think people, if more midwives really tested and shattered and exposed in the clinical setting to out of hospital births, we would have flooded a private practice as I truly yes. believe because they're the Cadillac of the births. They're, they're night and day different. We are the guest in their home. Like it's a totally different dynamic. And I love that part of it. Like they are truly ultimately in control. And it's much simpler. You know, people, um, I, I think that sometimes midwives think that it'll be harder because you have all these other roles that you're doing, but I can keep it simpler. Um, and the client appreciates that. I appreciate that. The same standard of care gets accomplished, but in a simpler way. Well, and I think that's why out of hospital births are increasing and increasing, especially post COVID. It's not just the fear of the hospital being a sick house, but how complex healthcare is getting and birth is a normal process. And like that was, and I know at most midwives and practices, it's just a calm, relaxed, laid back environment, the education's that way, the labor support. And so, yeah, I, I think even for you, I mean, I was more stressed out in the hospital setting and the clinic and the rush in the day to day than I got to drive and I got to choose how long and like just that power of how how crazy do you want your day how crazy do you want your volume to get you are in control of that right absolutely so with your practice being open for eight years do you feel like you're in a place where it's like where did you shift from I'm a new baby practice to now I'm more well-grounded established did you notice like with certain repeat clients or a branding in the community when did you notice a shift of how you're viewed well, I would probably say three to four years in, yes, you know, then you have multiple repeat people coming back, which is exciting and to get to know their families and all those relationships and not only a repeat client, but then her sister, her sister-in-law, her friend, her friend's friend, you know, and all those depths of uh, relationships is, is um, very rewarding and exciting to see those families. So, but COVID changed the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. um, the many clients that were fearful perhaps of being out of hospital, or they said, I couldn't talk my husband into being out of hospital because of his fear. Um, then we're calling and saying, I'm fearful of being in the hospital and of the restrictions there. What can you, you know, can we have, can we talk? Yeah. And so that being a year and a half ago is when things exploded. Now about the same time, I also had another midwife for a short time working with me. And um, so we, I had, the numbers were going up already and I was excited because then I could support that second person. Um, and then through various things that happened, she decided to move on to a different, um, a different state. And um, so then I was left with a busy, busy group of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so still trying to manage and um, see how to best meet the needs of my community and yet take care of myself. Yeah, yeah. the work-life balance is so, so difficult and it makes a difference. You've got very, you're blessed with very amazing midwives in the community to support each other, but you still like, they're, they have a busy practice. You all have a busy practice. And so balancing, like, we just need more midwives. And like you and I have talked about on the sidelines, like how do we support the midwives? So this vicious cycle of burnout and um, just good support, good clinical experience, good, you train students all the time, which is amazing. Um, how do we expand midwifery in a healthy way? Right. Absolutely. Yes. So important. Yeah. Yes. And, so and, the, and the midwives that are in my, my community aren't so close 
that I necessarily can send people to their practice. We kind of fringe on the edges. Okay. So truthfully, there's not anybody else in my region. It's just and different. while that's great for business, it's almost too much for business. You know, because I can't refer necessarily clients to somebody else if I'm full. Yeah. So I have yeah. to say, I'm sorry, I can't. Yeah. And that's what's hard because you feel a little more that guilt. It's not like, oh my gosh, I trained this wonderful lady that's down the street. I'm going to send you there because now you're pushing that not saying no and not saying the barriers because everybody has a story, everybody, but you can't serve everybody. I mean, you right. learned that for me. And um, yeah, so I think it's very interesting. You guys are doing such amazing things in the community. Um, I know you've been looking for another partner, kind of what style of midwife or education or um style of a, a partner are you looking for well um i work in two states okay. so so we have to think about how licensure happens in michigan as well as indiana mm -hmm. um last year my indiana numbers surpassed my michigan numbers and so um but my home is in michigan obviously my practice is based in michigan um so i forgot where i was going with that we were um, just talking about your potential partner and just the regulations oh yes, and yes. dynamics. So, which so what that looks like. Okay. So um, certainly certified nurse midwives are able to practice independently in both states. So that's not been an issue for me as practice. Um, if I bring another certified nurse midwife on to work with me, that would be great. If I have a, cer a certified professional midwife that would come work with me, we have a little more challenge. Um, Michigan has a fabulous law. Indiana is a little bit more challenging. And so I think sometimes when certified professional midwives or CPMs look at the option of maybe coming to Indiana, they're like, oh, that's a little bit, that requires a lot of hoop jumping. Yeah, and sure. so, um, so I'm willing to help somebody do that, but it is a little bit more of a challenge. The biggest challenge being their, their licensure requires physician collaboration. Yeah, sure. And so um, we have a little bit more of a challenge. Um, the CPMs that I know that do work in Indiana have found ways to make that work. Um, but it is a little bit of a challenge for sure. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that's what's hard. Like in a perfect world, I'd love to see midwifery practices where we have two CNMs, two CPMs, direct entry, because they're going to complement each other with more of the little high risk, GYN, more of the alternatives in their education. But sometimes it's, it's feel, it feels like, well, we think one's better. And I'm like, there's a lot of dynamics to think about with the credentials that you're joining on your team as a business owner. Because um, I know when I had my private practice, we didn't have midwifery regulations. That's just a year out. So with me and having malpractice and being in network with insurance and like people felt like, oh, she doesn't like certified professional midwives. I'm like, that's not the case. It's the way the regulations are currently, I, the practice and the business structure can't support this. And, and that's frustrating to me. How do we build collaboration when the state regulations are creating tension between you to support each other? Right, right. So, so certainly in Michigan, that, that's changed in a, in a very dynamic way in the past couple of years, which yeah, is very exciting. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So you just got to get Indiana that direction. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so you're looking for a partner. I mean, are you willing for a new graduate if they're the right candidate? Like kind of tell me what type of ideal client, uh, potential partner are you looking for? Well, I, I think that somebody that is perhaps of a little different demographic than myself might be helpful. Um, somebody that's um, a few years younger, it's a little bit more uh, perhaps closer to the age of, of our usual client might be helpful. Um, someone that is perhaps newer to coming out of school has um, been updated and some of the new thoughts. I think that's great. Um, I, I believe that even offering a new graduate a spot and then having them um, work alongside very closely for a year mm -hmm. would be ideal. It just gives them a great opportunity to jump into the home birth world with a lot of safety net, a lot of comfort, a lot of support. Um, and I think that that would be a terrific um, um, fit. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also open to, and, and, and there could be something to said, be said for somebody that is coming in fresh, doesn't necessarily have some preconceived ideas. Yeah, it's a balancing um, act for sure. Right, um, and obviously not as much experience, a little bit more fear perhaps, a little greener perhaps. Um, so um, I don't know if I really have an ideal 
Canada. I always joke. It's kind of like first time moms and mall tips. Like I take a first time mom any day of the week versus a traumatized hospital pass delivery. Like if, if you have someone that's new and green, you can teach them skills. They're, they're innocent. They're open to ideas. If you have a well-established experienced midwife, but they have a very cultural viewpoint of how birth should care and manage, that's hard to orientate and mesh styles together. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, no, I'm excited for you, Terry. I mean, even like you and I talked on the sidelines, the benefits of someone, even if they don't want to work forever for a team, like this is a perfect building place. If you want to start your own private practice, you were distressing. You would love to have someone to refer to, even if they say, hey, a couple years, I want to learn from you, but I do want to eventually do my own thing. You could teach them the business side. You can teach them the clinical side. I think what's really important to not create tension, because I hear it all the time across the country is the midwife joins and the other midwife thinks she's going to be there forever. And then all of a sudden her idea is I'm just going to learn from you and join a, a practice or be a practice across the street. If you have open conversations of your long-term, short-term goals, it just makes things so much better. I mean, I would not be opposed if I was solo and had no one to send to, I'd be like, I don't care. I'll train you for two, three years. And I know your skills. I know we can collaborate. I'm, I'm benefiting my own practice by, by helping to grow the community, even if this, but maybe she'll see the business side and say, oh my gosh, like I will let Terry do that. <laughs> right right yes and and i think that we do have a unique population of midwives in our region we don't really have a lot of competition here um even for the midwives that are a little bit closer in proximity to each other i think that there's not the verbiage of oh that midwife doesn't know as much as i do no we all have different skills we're all here to support each other there's enough work to go around for everybody and plenty, plenty, plenty of work. And so it is, as I know, in, in some locations, you hear a little bit of that. You hear that, you You're know. You're saturated. We've got too many midwives. Don't don't move here. And I'm like that Michigan, Indiana border, the Amish, the Mennonites, and the, the I mean, Kalamazoo has like barely anything. Like there, if, if any midwife wants to start a practice, even if they don't want to work with Terry and just collaborate and learn like, if you want to be busy from the beginning and you're willing to move, like this is the place to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. So. And, 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 and I know that in some regions, midwives are a little bit more eating each other and yeah. we have not seen that here. So it's yeah, you guys have awesome midwives. I mean, I, I trained in that region 12 years ago. Like I, I know how great, and that's what's so awesome is um, I know even the doulas, like knowing the birth community as a whole, like they are so collegial. There's such a, it's an amazing environment and there's such a need, the clients you serve. I mean, that Midwest low key feel, if someone's willing to move and want a slower pace of life with everything. Oh, yes. um, Absolutely. Good cost of living, no traffic jams. Yes. Um, you, know, you get to have the nice country roads and how much of your clients are English and how much are Amish and Mennonite community? I, I do not serve very many Amish. Okay, you know, okay. we have a very small Amish community um, about between here and Kalamazoo. Okay. Um, and I, so yeah, not many there. And then truthfully, I have some in the Goshen, Indiana area because home birth is not very available there most of the midwives in that region are doing birth center only. Yeah, because they've got the two, they've got Napanee and New Eden, correct? The two right. birth centers right. and yeah. Right. And so some of the families that I've served down there um, are like, I really don't want to go to the birth center. I want to stay at home. And so I've had a few families, not, so I probably would say maybe five or six Amish families a year. Okay. Yeah. So, and yeah. then the rest are your run of the mill, English middle class family, yeah. um, birth people. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, I'm excited for you, Terry. And I know I'm going to put a little plug in for myself, if you don't mind about the consulting services and, um, I, we've known each other for years. And so it's been fun just to, um, you and your office manager, Kim, have been uh, working with me, and I would love if you can add some suggestions of when a consultant's a good idea for your practice and how it's been going so far. I would love for that feedback for other people. Right, right. So it's been very helpful as, as we have tried to figure out how to mainstream our services. We're bringing on other helpers in our practice, and you've helped us to uh, perhaps delegate, how, know, know how to delegate which which roles to which people. We brought on a, um, a nurse and we brought on an office assistant. 
that are beyond my um, primary office person. And so as we're bringing on these people to help us out with some of those other tasks, how to best utilize our time. And so that's been great to talk to you and for you to help us think outside the box that I never considered that, I, you know, wow, that's a great idea. Yes, I don't need to be talking to every person individually, the same verbiage over and over. No, we need to streamline that so yeah. that utilizing our time better. Well, and I think it's it's really fun because everybody's different. Some people are new green practices and we emphasize marketing and getting a good foundation. You're very well established. You need nothing for marketing. You need like demarketing. So we need to, what is Terry good at and what can we leverage other wonderful people's expertise? So it, it, everybody's different. And so that's why I love what I do because I, I, I can look at it and I have that complex, like there's a lot going on moving pieces and based on your budgets and your needs and where you guys want to go and what's your priority, we customize a plan. And so yeah, Kim and I are going to meet together regularly and get a lot of great things accomplished for you. Yes, I'm excited about that. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I know you have a ruptured lady and you've got to go do some home visits. So I'm going to let you go back to your busy schedule. And thank you so much for meeting with me and passing on your wisdom, Terry. But thank you for helping, helping me share what my practice is about. And, and know that, yes, we have a great Michiana opportunity here mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. we call the michigan indiana region <laughs> yep yep yeah no if you want some low-key awesome awesome families to serve in a very busy area to get well established get lots of experience or just build your practice and work closely i know you are looking just as much for some collaborating midwives as you are a partner in crime so <laughs> yes yes absolutely okay well have a great day terry thank, thank you. you you too bye, bye.